So anyway, like another most important lesson, perhaps the last most important lesson I'm gonna share today is like measure everything. Everything, anything that you can measure as a business should be measured today. Uh, early on, like we just didn't have any measurement. <laughs> like we went to investors and like, hey, we need some money and like, hey, how's your platform growing? How's your product doing? How many minutes there are on your site? What do people do on Pinterest? And we're like, we don't know. We just don't know. Uh, so today we like measure everything, like every. Yeah, like so. What we do is like we buffer all the events into like one big chunk, and then we compress them, and then ship it every 90 seconds, 60 seconds, and stuff. I mean that's today, but like if, when you're building like a brand new company, you can't do that. Like that's going to be like you don't need scrolling data and all, right? Like if you're big enough, like Google or something like Pinterest, decent size, you, you wanna know like why is the user clicking the third link and not the first one? That would be like the input to the search team, like hey, I think the algorithm is bad or something, we need to like get this link to the top. So data like that is super valuable at the side, but initially I would say like measure every interaction, like hey, they clicked on this pen, they searched. And this works with the technology? Yeah. Pretty much we wrote an endpoint, we shipped this huge JSON blob. Three line is an interaction like scroll, pinch, stop, click, close up, exit, close the app, background. So we like ship that. And then like we have the data team doing all the magic. I have no idea what they do, but like they just like compress all this, put it into S3, and then we have another team picking it off. They like generate huge reports. They write in latex. I don't even know what latex is, but like it's beautiful format. Yeah. This is JSON blob at that Yep. So yep. Yes. It used to be JSON, now it's thrift, but yeah. So that's how we measure today. But like, if I were to redo Pinterest again and like answer these investors, I would like kind of use a service like Segment or something. Like, they just provide a beautiful SDK API. It's like, scroll, click. Exit, open the app, just like put s store your data there. I would say just raise more money for it, but it's super valuable data. So you should always like build measurement as from day one, but it took us two years to realize that. So then you can build this beautiful graph for your investors like, hey, this quarter we grew by 18% or like 12% or 0%. Oh, that's how I mean, yeah. It's just an example because you want to give graphs like this that would definitely like make an investor make a judgment like, yep, I'm gonna bet on this because it's, I think the, the curve is going up and I'm, I definitely want my money in there. So. so if the question is like, what do we measure? My answer is always everything. I, I mean, depends on the size of your company and like the amount you're trying to put on your data. So, so what do we get? by measuring out of everything. Beautiful dashboards like these, like what country, like by what gender, by what kind of user, is he a core user or he's like a dormant user, is a power pinner or like a power searcher and like, I don't know what that, but yeah, just like slice and dice your data on different um, attributes on the fly. So these are the kind of things you want to see on your company and like make some judgments like, hey, like I think this quadrant is growing too fast. We need to like do some special behavior for them. And this is the feedback I hear. Uh, should we do this? Like again, go back to the data. Like how many people actually care about this? Like, oh, only the country, Taiwan or something cares. And like that's a small portion. So like maybe we could like put it off into the back burner for someday we'll like build that. And like how every experiment is doing, how are the core daily active users, mobile di daily active users, how many people are going to the close-ups, like, oh yeah, people cl click a shit ton, that's good. Oh, people don't actually comment, like, oh, maybe that's bad, like maybe you should kill that feature, just make the app fast and like smaller, simpler. So yeah, it's good to build dashboards like this, yeah. Yeah. 
I don't want to really answer that because you know the answer. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like the way I see it is like a lot. No offense to guys, but like guys don't really like plan, think about it. You just go to the store. Like I'm gonna buy this shirt. So yeah, like they're not obsessed about like I want to buy my best shirt. It's just like they go like they pick one thing, they're done. But like more. The, the product definitely gels more into like feminine group because they like think upsets and like want to make addition so yeah thank you so yeah Yeah, that is definitely the experience we want you to have, which is why we put the best content for you out in the open. Is that what you're trying to ask, or sorry? Yeah, yeah, I'm just wondering, is it like the customer themselves like prefer the comments with the layout? So when you say, like when you say customer, are you meaning like a pinner who's visiting yeah, the yeah, website? Yeah, pinner. So what's the question here? Can you repeat the customer? It's all, I think I, I would say it's like 50-50 because we kind of, we're like, hey, I think your intent is about cooking. So let me just like guide you through the cooking experience. So we like show like cooking pins and then we, want, we kind of want you to pin it and then become part of the ecosystem. So we kind of m make a guess on your intent. We show content and then we measure like, huh, the user just like closed the tab. So we got the intent wrong. How can we make it better? So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we do behind the scenes to like get your intent and all. Because I mean, there's like websites have like these UTM campaign tags that we could like read and like make a decision about, or like pin it button. Like, oh, the user tried to click that button and came here, and we think this pin is about these six things. We don't know which thing, so we're gonna like kind of do a good uh, mix and match and decision making. Like, hey, I think it could be about pinning or like food photography or something else, like utensils or something. So kind of do a best job and like you kind of measure it. So it's always like somewhere in the middle. Like we want you to pin and like bring and contribute it back to the ecosystem and like make the cooking interest or topic stronger with your input, right? So this is another dashboard, the same thing, but <coughs> measuring on core users like how are your power users like pinning or creating content? So as you can see, like comments is still low, so like maybe we should kill comments someday. So that so I, if I were an engineer, this is what I would read my dashboards and make addition. Like, oh, yeah, building dashboards is really like important, worth it. And so finally, I just want to tell like building a company is it's a loop. Like you're doing the same things again and again at a different stage, at a different scale every day. Like in version one, you're probably like, oh, I want to build this. One engineer, one designer, just deploy the shit, go to the users. But like if you have like 100 million users and like 200 engineers and like 50 designers, it's a completely different thing. You just don't even have any say in anything. Like, hey guys, like I think the problem is this and people are not coming back to Pinterest. So just redesign this entire experience. 50 people prototyping for the next six months. 100 people building code for the next one year. And like deploying takes another oh, three months or something. So everything gets slow. So like how it's you, like since you are the CEO, or like you are the co-founder of the company, like how fast do you want to like deploy? How fast do you want to learn? And how fast can you do it? So this is what I think a company should like all, like a co-founder's job is to like keep this loop running. A CEO's job is like, has my loop any loopholes? Like, is there any break in the loop? How, how can I fix it? Do I need to get a new guy? Is there bad blood in the team? Or is there 
problem like money or like can we throw money at the problem and so that's something I learned by watching Ben closely every day and it's a very interesting book that I read a while back which I feel I don't know if a few people have read this guy near wrote the book called Hooked it kind of explains every product in different things I forgot the four different quadrants but like um, one is investment and what do you get out, the, get out of the product and does the user find value if he does it becomes a habit in their lives and like how he explains how every successful product like Facebook or Pinterest or anything like becomes a habit over time like the first thing you get out of bed some people are just like browsing Instagram or Pinterest because it's a habit for them so I think it's an interesting read. I, I personally don't think you can build a product like I'm going to build a product which is going to fall in the four quadrants. It's the other way. You build a product and like it happens to fall in the four. So I would say just like read it and just forget it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'm done with that. Just want to leave a quote like the more like I matured, I always feel like Shit, I should have done that, should have done this. So as a people or the future entrepreneurs, I don't want you to have any doubt about anything. Just, just figure out what is the cheapest way I can build it and the cheapest way I can learn from that experiment and then move on.